Lauren, thanks for that. Well, time is running out this morning. You only have one day to make a decision as to who you will vote for for the City of Columbia Council this morning. Good day. On Good Day, we'll have all the candidates who are running. And we wanted to be fair and offer each candidate some time to speak. That's why they won't be here all at the same time. So we're going to divide it up so you'll see four different candidates this morning. First up, joining us right now is Andy Smith. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. Um, Andy, okay, for those of who don't know who you are, really quick for about 30 seconds, who is Andy Smith and why should we vote for you? Sure. Well, um, thanks for having me here this morning. I, I'm a Columbia native. Okay. I've been running the Nickel Nickelodeon Theater uh, for the last four years. I've been on staff for nine mm -hmm. years um, and really saw the Nickelodeon through its transition to Main Street and its yeah. explosive growth over the last few years. Um, but I'm also, I'm in this race because mm -hmm. I really care about the future of our city. I think this election is really going to determine what kind of future our city has. I want to make sure we're building a more innovative city, a more inclusive city, and a safer city. And I think I have the ideas and experience to get us there. Speaking of ideals, one of your platform issues is uh, supporting startups and enhancing the entrepreneurial uh, culture here in our city. You know, we're, uh, Columbia's pretty good for helping startups and businesses. What's your plan to help further that? So there are a number of points, but yeah. um, the biggest thing to recognize is in the 21st century, uh, companies, especially startups, can basically set up wherever they want, anywhere across the country. Right. So we need to make sure our city is focusing on basic nuts and bolts things, like having safe neighborhoods, having a water sewer system that functions well, but then going above and beyond that for things like, what can we do to look at how many, we've got so many vacant buildings along North Main Street. What could we do there to incentivize people to move from their little startup businesses and their garages to storefronts in neighborhoods that really need more activity, that sort of thing. Okay. So we're talking about a garages to storefronts program that we, we've seen it be successful in other cities. I think Columbia is primed to make that kind of thing take off here. You know, you recently spoke about the end of transfer plan, basically stopping the release of funds from you know, the City of Columbia Water and Sewer System Fund. Um, why was that? Why is that important to you? Well, you know, what we learned from the storm uh, just a little oh, over a month ago absolutely. is how fragile our system is. But even before that, this was something I've been talking about. My wife and I, when I first got into the campaign, spent a whole weekend with brown water coming out of our taps over in Earlwood. Oh, wow. uh, that's not yeah. okay. No, yeah. In the 21st mm -hmm. century, we should be able to count on clean water. So it's just really hard to justify any sort of transfer out of the water sewer fund when we still have crumbling infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I've got a plan in place to make sure that that stops right. um, and, and make sure it stops without harming our police and fire department because actually that's where the transfer goes right now it's all it all goes to public safety so we've oh. got to make sure we shouldn't have to choose between clean water safe neighborhoods and fire protection um, and uh, again I think we can I think we can get through this it's just gonna take a little bit of strong leadership to get us there you know we have a few more seconds left you know give your final appeal tomorrow is the day you know you're facing off against Howard Duvall um, what would you want the folks of Columbia to know and why this at-large seat needs to have you in there well well, the biggest reason, again, why I'm running is because I'm focused on our future, not our past. I think we need to be looking 20, 30 years into the future if we're going to grow and prosper as a city. I've got a history as an innovator. I've got a history as someone who takes on big projects and see them through. And uh, I want to just make sure, again, that we're building a really innovative, a really inclusive city. Our, our, our citizens deserve leadership who, who represent all of them, who aren't concerned about drawing lines between neighborhoods and things like that. So um, I'm excited to get on there, excited to start all this hard work. All right, Andy Smith, ladies and gentlemen, he is a candidate for the city of Columbia at large um, council seat. Of course, tomorrow is election day, Tuesday, November the 17th. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. Make sure you exercise your right to vote. Thank you, Andy, for being here this morning. Well, this morning, time is running out. Tomorrow is election day for the city of Columbia a council. Well, this morning on Good Day, we will have all the candidates who are running. We're offering each candidate time to speak. Joining us right now is Howard Duvall. Good morning to you, Mr. Duvall. Top of the morning to you. Yes. And you are running for the at-large seat. I am. Um, really quick, before we get into the question segment here, for about 30 seconds, tell the folks who Howard Duvall is and why they should vote for you. Well, I have a long experience in municipal government. I have 12 years in elective office in the town of Chirau on the city council and as mayor. Uh, I came to Chirau and I came to Columbia in 1986 to work for Governor Riley. In 1987, I went with the Municipal Association of South Carolina. That association is a nonprofit that represents all 270 cities and towns in the state of South Carolina. And we work to solve problems from the smallest city of Carlisle to the largest city of Columbia. 
Uh, we have, I have had municipal experience solving all sorts of problems, and I think that experience would be helpful for the city of Columbia right now after our disaster. Okay. Uh, first up, Mr. Duvall, finances. You have a, a, a lot of platform issues, but money and finances seems to be like your heavy hitter. Why is that? You talk about improving the finances of the city. How are you going to do that? Well, uh, I want to look at, at how we are financing things. We, we are maxed out on our credit cards with the City of Columbia. We have used all the available credit that the state allows us, and so we're having to use uh, innovative ways to finance, which are more expensive. I think that we need to think smarter about uh, how we finance things and what projects we get in. Uh, a lot of our people think we need to think big. I think we need to think smart. Okay. Improving public safety, that's one of your other um, platform issues on your campaign. Talk to us about improving public safety. How you go about making sure our men and women are protected? Well, public safety is the basic function of municipal government. Municipal government is all about quality of life, and that starts with a safe community. Uh, I have enjoyed going around to the different neighborhoods in Columbia and seeing uh, how nice our neighborhoods are, mm -hmm. but every neighborhood is worried about crime. Uh, we, we have had too many drive-by shootings. We need to have better police enforcement. We need to make sure that the money that's been transferred out of the water and sewer fund to, to the uh, public safety segment uh, is replaced in next year's budget because we're not going to be able to transfer any money out of the water and sewer fund. So public safety is an important basic function of municipal government and we need to support it. One of the final questions here this morning, um, updating our aging and crumbling infrastructure. That's also one of the pieces of your platform here. Obviously, in the wake of what happened last month, the flooding really it heightened a lot of issues. What is your plan to secure our infrastructure? Well, the uh, infrastructure was one of my platform uh, points before the okay. flood of October the 4th. Uh, after the flood of October mm -hmm. the 4th, it became an imperative that we get our infrastructure yeah. repaired. Mm -hmm. uh, we had $750 million worth of consent orders due uh, before October the 4th. Uh, the mayor says it's going to be a billion dollars. I think it's going to be closer to two billion dollars mm -hmm. when you wow. add the water and sewer together. I think we need to carefully consider the money that we will be getting from the federal government to make sure that we can uh, pinpoint the areas of our infrastructure that need immediate repair, like mm -hmm. the canal, uh, get everything put back, using as much of the FEMA money as we can to help us uh, repair and replace the aging infrastructure that we have. Gotcha. All right. Howard Duval, folks, he is running for the City of Columbia Council at large seat. That's right. At large seat. Um, election is tomorrow. Don't forget November the 17th from polls open at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So for that, well, election day is tomorrow and all morning long on Good Day. We've been focusing on the city of Columbia council races. So far this morning, we have heard from, we're going to hear right now from three candidates. We wanted to be fair, so we invited all the candidates who are running and we didn't have them all together at once because we wanted each to have about three minutes and 30 seconds to talk about their platform. Joining us right now is Aaron Bishop. Mr. Bishop, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you, friend. We appreciate it. Really quick, before we get to the um, questions, for those folks who may not know who you are, you have about 30 seconds. Tell them who Aaron Bishop is and why they should vote for you. Well, Aaron Bishop is a homegrown leader, um, matriculated through the public school systems here, and um, served as an immediate past chairman of Richland One. Also, I'm a local pastor here, okay. an entrepreneur, and um, you know, just a guy who wants to be uh, a servant leader for his people. In short, that's who Aaron Bishop is. Okay, Mr. Bishop. You know, we had a chance to kind of like go through your platforms. You have a number of platforms and a number of issues for your campaign. One of them that's um, stabilizing and improving our infrastructure. Talk to us about that issue and how you plan on making sure everything is stable. Well, with, with, with the consistent climate change that we are experiencing just yeah. here locally as well as nationally mm -hmm. and globally, mm -hmm. uh, we have a priority, which is our infrastructure. And if we uh, do not use the preference of our tax dollars mm -hmm. or our financial means as a city, we put ourselves in jeopardy again. You know, we, we talk about the thousand year flood that we just experienced. And yeah. I was one of the people who was out there, you know, with relief effort, giving out 185,000 bottles of water, a wow. thousand hot meals. You got to look at the opportunity for us to be responsible as a government, just mm -hmm. government, just not as citizens. Wow. And so by doing that, we can put uh, millions of dollars back into our infrastructure, which I think we need to make sure that is a priority 
Therefore, it becomes stabilized, and uh, it needs to be shared responsibility between gotcha. local government. So my plan is to meet with local government bodies and say, what can we do together gotcha. to make sure that this is just not a local issue, mm -hmm. but a statewide and federal issue. One of the other platforms here, you talked about building our city while improving the quality of life for all. Elaborate on the quality of life and how you plan on getting that done. Well, the quality of life has to deal with two entities working together, the city government as well as the school board. Mm -hmm. As we make sure that we can continuously work together uh, to provide an educational pathway that leads to job and economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. We can look at the holistic possibility of families uh, being able to provide for their own. Um, and therefore, we're not looking at people battling what is called livable wages mm -hmm. um, and making sure that they can't overwork themselves, but they're able to go to PTA meetings able to go to their kids' games. Right. This is the quality of life people want. People also want quality infrastructure in their streets, in their jobs. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want homes. Mm -hmm. They would love to have opportunity to do what the Constitution says, which is the pursuit of happiness. Gotcha. So that's the quality of life I'm speaking of. And really quick, we have 15 seconds left, uh, uh, Mr. Bishop. Your last 15 seconds of why folks should vote for you. Well, Aaron Bishop is a qualified leader who has served this community consistently. Mm -hmm. I'm a homegrown leader, great, mm -hmm. raised up in this community. And I believe that I'll be the one who will be able to serve this people, serve the people of Columbia going forward. All right, Aaron Bishop is running for the District 2 City of Columbia Council. seat, folks, election is tomorrow. Well, election day is tomorrow. And this morning on Good Day Columbia, we've been focusing on the City of Columbia council race. Now we've had three candidates on so far and now we're on to our last candidate. Joining us right now is Ed McDowell. Reverend McDowell, thank you for being here this morning. Friendy, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to come. Absolutely. And before we get to some of the questions here, let's get straight to it. For some of the folks who are watching who don't know who you are, who is who is Ed McDowell and why should they vote for you? I am Ed McDowell, of course. I am a U retired United Methodist pastor. Okay. 41 years, three years retired. Uh, I'm running for this office because I want to be the voice of uh, Carolina, the voice of Columbia. Yeah. I want to be that person to be accessible, to be ready when day one comes. Gotcha. There are three main issues we're going to touch upon of uh, your platform. Number one is infrastructure. What are your plans to secure our infrastructure? Well, one of the most interesting things about infrastructure, of course, I think you know that the uh, the water for um, oh, yeah. the for flooding. Columbia, yes. the flooding for uh, the thousand year flood. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very, very important that we secure and that our infrastructure is tight. Right. What's the next disaster? Is it a flood? Is it a hurricane? Is it a tornado? Mm -hmm. We want to ensure that those things are taken care of. The other issue that you talk about is bridging the gap that gap between the business and the community. What are your plans to make sure that gap is closed or filled? Well, one of the interesting things, of course, is to bridge that gap is to collaboratively mm -hmm. come together as business and community to talk and discuss and strategically come up with ways and means whereby things can possibly happen for one Columbia. And for the final issues here this morning, time is escaping us. Let's get to crime. You, we know you focus on crime a lot. You talked about that, but it's an issue that everybody um, sees every day on the news. How do you plan on tackling that? Well, one, one of the things that I think is crucially important is that we do some real educating. Mm -hmm. We do some real educating about this whole issue of yeah. crime right. in Colombia. Uh, as you know, there are pockets of crime in Colombia, not everywhere. But if we don't get a real avid handle on this thing called crime, we're going to find ourselves in a qu quagmire. You're right about that. One of the other things, too, um, um, tomorrow is Election Day, of course, so the polls open at 7 o'clock. The polls um, close at 7 p.m., and we've had four different candidates on um, this morning talking to us about the, the city of Columbia race. And um, Reverend McDowell, really quick again, we have about 30 more seconds um, once again, your last final appeal, what do you want to tell voters heading to the polls tomorrow? Well, one of the interesting things is that I do want to be your council person. Actually, I want to be your full-time council person. I want to be accessible. I want to be sensitive to the needs of folk. I want to be able to, of course, bridge that gap between community and business. I also want to be that person who independently thinks through his or her decisions and come away with a clear path 
for uh, discovery and rediscovery.